um, next question is from Lisa. Uh, I have been asked the question below. Okay. INFJ, the INFJ in my life often thinks that she knows something about how I feel or what I want or, or what I think. She believes that this is, sorry, she believes this is the point where she's unable to and unwilling to listen to me if I say that I think or feel differently than she thinks I do. I find this disrespectful and I feel robbed of my voice and as, and as is if I don't exist to her. Um, when I bring this up, we argue, and I don't understand how she thinks she knows my mind more than I do. How do I handle this situation? Okay, fantastic question. And in fact, if you're an INFJ, I will absolutely bet a thousand dollars on the fact that you there's somebody in your life who feels this way about you. Okay, and this is where as INFJs we need to eat that humble pie and say, well, I actually don't know better. The reason why we think we feel no better is because we have observed, observed a pattern that we then file away into our inward facing intuition library. And then we think that, you know, once we've seen enough information, and of course, you know, if we believe something is true, then there's a bias towards believing that and we see things in a biased way. So we see evidence of the same thing. Uh, you know, more than we don't because our subconscious is connected to seeing the biased information because now we're thinking in that way. So what then happens is that we keep getting biased, confirmation bias, so we keep getting the same information over and over and over and over and over again. And now we start believing that we know exactly what something means, even though, number one, it might be different for that one person. So let's just say that you're right 99% of the time, that 1% of the time you're wrong. And number two, you might actually have made a wrong conclusion about all the information that you have collected in a biased way. So there is a high probability that when, you know, if you find yourself in this situation when somebody is saying to you, hey, you don't, you, you're not listening to me or you're not, you know, you don't, like I know better how I'm feeling. If somebody said this to you, you've probably been wrong. It's, mm -hmm. it's close to 100% reality that you've actually been wrong. <laughs> so we're not always right. And that's something that we need to understand. And um, what usually happens with this kind of a thing is if you keep an open mind, so if you say, okay, I have a feeling that this is what this is, but I'm not 100% sure, now your mind is open to looking for different uh, different uh, pieces of information that might complement what you already think you know or what you know already, uh, or it might change it slightly. But if you don't stay open to not being right, then you won't learn it. Your life just becomes more and more narrow as your own perception of things gets more narrow. So when you say to yourself, hey, you know, or you say to a person, hey, could, could this be going on? Could that be going on? And then they still have to say, they have the right to say, no, it doesn't feel right. Or yeah, you know what, that's probably right. Then what happens is that we don't actually, uh, our, our life just gets more, more wide and expanded and richer uh, in so many ways um, because we're no longer just um, almost like reliant on being right all the time. So, you were saying when this comes up, um, how do I deal with this situation? Well, the first thing that you deal with, how you deal with the situation is understanding that the INFJ who's in front of you is in fact married to their own opinion, which means that their inward facing intuition is not very healthy right now. Now, if you feel like extending compassion towards that, then that's fine. Absolutely. I mean, you know, people don't, people aren't being um, difficult for the sake of being difficult, they're being difficult because they have a they have some kind of a um, uh, wound or they have some kind of a struggle that they're dealing with right now, and they feel like if they at least can control this one thing, then they have some control over their lives. So, um, but 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 I, what, what I will say is that you don't have to have compassion in this situation. There's nothing that says that you have to now take the high road. Because it is disrespectful. You know, you're saying, I find this disrespectful and feel wrote of my voice and like I don't exist to her. Well, that's exactly effectively what she's saying. Even if she doesn't mean that, that's how 
it you know the the effects of the the interaction are still the same so you can there are a repertoire of way of, ways of dealing with this and one of them is hey uh, i see that you're having a you know that you you think that that this is the right thing and this is what how it is um and and that's fine uh, if you need to feel that way then you go ahead and deal with that you know you feel that way and that's fine the other thing you could ask is it you know do, do they have a point is there something there that might be in your blind spot or that you are not um that you don't want to face but but you are completely in your right to just tell them that they are uninterested in having they're uninterested in knowing how you're feeling about the situation and that their uh, the support that they're trying to give you the insight that they're trying to give you is not actually helpful you are completely in your right completely in your right to say that so i'd like to ask you then how how are you deciding to deal with this what are you going to do now uh, because you have an you have a repertoire of options um, that you can how you can deal with that all right so that's all we have time for today thank you everyone for tuning in it's been great uh, spending this time with you hey val um and uh, yeah i'm looking forward to our session next week and if you feel like you know a person who could really uh, use this work um, please invite them into the group, but remind them as well about the fact that we do have three questions that they have to answer to make sure that they are the right fit for the group and that the, indeed the, the group is right for them. Because if it's not, so let's just say, for example, that we're in INFJ, INFP development group and they're in a healing stage, this group is not right for them. So then we can say, oh, have you looked at the INFJ, INFP healing group? Because that might be more appropriate for you. So we're here to help. Let's spread this. Um, this um this support uh, around and i would like to challenge you to um share with somebody this coming week share one point that you're taking away from this video and share it with somebody who's struggling with that same issue and again if you're tuning into this video i'd like to issue you a challenge and just put it into the comment section what was the mo what was the number one takeaway your 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 um you've gained from today's video all right, so I'll see you next week. Have a great week, everyone.